boys. Welcome back. Oh, excuse me. Let me take my headphones off. Welcome back. Um, today we are going to be talking about the Dark Elves um, from the 5th edition Warhammer Battle Book. Um, please excuse me if I sound like I'm speaking very quickly or if I sound like I'm nervous. Um, I have just had far too much coffee, um, but hopefully we will be able to get through this together. Um, I think, because the Dark Elf passage is pretty short, that I'm also going to do the undead in this video, so stay tuned for that. Dark Elves. The Dark Elves were driven from the elven homeland of Ulthalon many centuries ago, and now live in the northern regions of Nagaroth, the bleak land of Chill. Dark Elves, or Druki as they are called in the elf tongue, are close kin to the High Elves, and in appearance they are pale, but otherwise almost identical. Masters of Dark Sorcery The High Elves are the greatest wizards in the whole world and the Dark Elves are also a race touched by magical power. Whereas the High Elves take great care to protect themselves from dangerous magical energies, especially demons, the Dark Elves long ago embraced the Dark Gods of Chaos. The natural magic powers of Elves and the unnatural vitality of Chaos are mated together in the Dark Elves, so that they have become the ultimate masters of Dark Sorcery. Black Towers of Nagaroth. The Dark Elves live in the six heavily fortified cities. In six heavily fortified cities. Their innumerable black towers rising like pinnacles of ice from the cold, hard rock of Nagaroth. The surrounding landscape is bleak and unwelcoming. Bare rock and poisoned black water streams, with dark, forbidding pine forests to the south. Of their six cities, the largest is Nagarond, the Tower of Cold, where the greatest and most evil of all the Dark Elves, Malekith, the Witch King of Nagarond, holds court. Few mortals have ever seen this sinister sorcerer, and his body is said to have changed beyond recognition over the untold centuries of his unnaturally long life. His original elf form has been corrupted and altered by the magic of chaos for which it forms a mortal vessel. The Witch King is master of the cities of Nagaroth, Grond, the North Tower, Klar Karond, the Tower of Doom, Hag Graf, the Dark Crag, Harganeth, the City of Executioners, and Karond Kar, the Tower of Despair. All these cities are dark and evil places, steeped in death and agony. Their black dungeons are crammed with captive demons and unfortunate mortals, whose wailing fills the air and whose moans seep through the thick walls of the high towers, saturating the place with pain and despair. At the tips of these towers, soaked with evil and doom, the sorcerers of Nagaroth cast their malign magic over the world and consort with the darkest demons of chaos. Nemesis of the Elves The greatest enemies of the Dark Elves are the High Elves of Ulthalon. Dark Elf armies set off from the harbor of Harganeth in their huge demon-infested ships, sailing west over the Sea of Grudges to the Old World, and south through the Straits of of Renasha towards Ulthalon. When they reach their objectives, the Dark Elves rampage and destroy as much as they can, often burning and looting whole cities before returning with their plunder back to Nagaroth. Many of their raids are undertaken for captives, men, elves, or other creatures that they take back to their sorcerous towers. Few have ever escaped from slavery at the hands of the Dark Elves, and fewer still speak of their captivity, 
such tales are known. Such tales as are known tell of the haunted dungeons of the witch kings, of living sacrifices to the chaos gods, and of souls burned up to fuel the sorcery of Nagaroth. Armies of the witch king. Dark elf armies are mobile and well armed. Many carry the deadly repeater crossbow which shoots a hail of small barbed arrows. Others ride captive beasts, including gigantic scaled reptiles called cold ones. These creatures are hunted down and captured in the caves and tunnels beneath Hag, Hag Grave, where many strange ferocious creatures live. Dark elf women are just as deadly as their menfolk and are equally adept warriors fighting alongside their men in battle. The wildest of all are the witch elves, a warrior's sister devoted to the chaos god Korn, who they call Cain, lord of murder. They are the most cruel of all the dark elves and the most bloodthirsty. After a battle, they choose victims to sacrifice to Cain and bathe in cauldrons of blood, renewing their dark pact with the lord of murder. Witch elves eat only the flesh sacrifices and drink the flesh of sacrifices and drink blood to which they add strong poisonous herbs, which cause nightmarish hallucinations and send them into frenzied dancing and obscene revelries. Night of the Hag Queen. Witch elves live in the temples of Cain under the glowering eyes of their hag queens. The hag queens are extremely ancient, and once a year they take part in the riotous celebrations of Death Night, when the witch elves prowl the streets and steal away any dark elves they find, sometimes breaking into houses to take petrified inhabitants away for sacrifice. On Death Night, the hag queens bathe in blood to restore themselves, at which time they are the most enchanting and voluptuous of all elves. Their strangely cadaverous beauty more powerful and captivating than any magic. Over the year, the hag queens revert into the haggard crones they really are, until death night comes round once more, and dark elves hide in their homes, listening to the revelry and evil laughter of the midnight celebration of the witch elves. The witch elves also steal away some male children to raise in the temples of Cain to be assassins, and these are probably the most deadly and evil of all dark elves for... Oh, my goodness, I really screwed that one up. And these are probably the most deadly and evil dark elves of all, the masters of subtle and murderous magics. Special Rule Hate High Elves Dark elves hate their ancient enemies, the High Elves, so intensely that they will fight them to the death rather than run away. Such hatred is the result of centuries of bitterness and resentment, for the Dark Elves were expelled from the ancient realm of Lothalon many years ago and driven into the cold Northlands where they live today. When fighting High Elves, Dark Elves are affected by the rules for hatred, as described in the Warhammer rule book. Well, there you go. Um, not a whole lot of special rules there. on parade segment um which is it's just a lot of black paint um there's not a lot of color in this army uh except for the witch elves of course but even then the way they have them painted here is just skin tone black and purple hair um oh well they're not my favorite army that's obviously why i'm doing the battle book for them instead of their actual um, and I think now I'm going to do the undead. Yeah. I don't think this has been quite long enough, and the undead are kind of cool, so. Keep in mind, this is prior to the split between Vampire Counts and Tomb Kings, so this is just the undead. An undead army is a horrific thing to behold. Hordes of dead walking res resolutely forward bones rattling, dry flesh creaking, corroded war gear scraping and clanging. The smell of death hangs over the army like a cloud of contagion. The air is full of grave dust and the, r the, 
resinous smell. I don't think I've ever heard that before. Of mummified flesh. Spirits prowl like shadows amongst the ranks. Powerful wraiths, insubstantial ghosts, and whites plucked from their stony tombs. The skies darken with the tattered wings of carrion, and the earth shakes under the tread of skeleton warriors, zombies, mummies, and other repulsive undead creatures. Restless lands. It is scarcely any wonder that the dead do not rest easily in their tombs. The Warhammer world is steeped in magic, and everywhere there is magic, there is the power to change and undermine nature. In places where sorcerer's power is inexplicably strong, there are many undead creatures that roam at night or gather into the cold comfort of their tombs. In the Southlands, such a place is the land of the dead, the ancient realm of Nehekara. In the Empire, the province of Sylvania has an evil reputation, and at ages past its vampire counts waged war against the rest of the Empire. Then there is the cursed city of Musalon, the zombie-haunted swamps of Skaven Blight, and the ancient tombs of the Grey Mountains. The Barrow Hills of the Border Princes is a land of dread that all living creatures avoid where possible. Lords of Death Throughout mankind's history, there have been necromancers, vampires, and liches who have called to arms great armies of undead. There is none more powerful than Nagash, the supreme lord of the undead, who rests today within his sarcophagus, sarcophagus in Nagashizar, the deadly master of an evil empire that stretches into the old world and beyond. It was Nagash whose great spell of awakening brought many foul creatures from their graves, including the dread tomb kings of Kemri. But there are others who have striven to overthrow the living world and make themselves its undisputed lord in death. Lichmaster Heinrich Kemmler led a horde of skeletons, zombies, ghouls, and wraiths that poured down from the highlands of the Grey Mountains, destroying all in their wake. Arkan the Black rose from his tomb to crush the enemies of his master Nagash. And for many long years harried the Southlands in the wars of death. We have a quote here. In that dread desert, beneath the moon's pale gaze, the dead men walk. They haunt the dunes in that breathless, windless night. They brandish their weapons in mocking challenge to all life and sometimes in ghastly dry voices like the rustling of sear leaves they whisper the one word they remember from life the name of their ancient dark master they whisper the name Nagash by Abdul Ben Rashid translated from Arabic by Heinrich Kemmler apparently Arabic is a language in Warhammer. I guess it's obviously from Araby, but still, that's kind of weird, huh? Skeletons. Skeleton warriors carry rusted swords and splintered spears. Their war gear is rank with grave mold and tattered rags cling to their bones. They are bidden from where they lie beneath the battlefields of the world to fight once more for the masters of death. Zombies. Zombies are rotting corpses brought to life by foul sorceries. Their flesh hangs in strips from their bodies, and their clothes are caked with blood and filth. They are animated by magical power, and defeat destroys them, breaking the magic that animates them. Ghouls. Ghouls are shambling and cowardly creatures. The descendants of cannibals driven mad by tainted flesh and the terrible knowledge of their own evil deeds. Oh, that's kind of cool. I like that. Ghouls live amongst the dead, feeding upon corpses, sometimes attacking the living for the warm flesh that they crave. Special Rules Skeletons in Combat 
Skeletons cannot be broken in hand-to-hand -hand combat and never take break tests if, if defeated. Instead, their defeat weakens their magic, and for each point by which they lose, one extra skeleton is removed. Zombies in combat. A unit of zombies is utterly destroyed if it fails a break test in hand-to-hand -hand combat. for watching. Uh, bye bye.